another common issue we talk to fishermen quite about is uh, accidental trips of these flags when they're in use. Um, obviously the flag is designed, the indicator is designed to be set and detect bites as light as possible. What uh, other factors work against that sometimes is current, um, the size of your live bait, or wind. Um, some techniques to eliminate those uh, regarding wind. What we would suggest with wind is a lot of times, depending on the direction, if you can point the rod tip directly into the wind. So if the wind's coming this way, make sure your pole's pointing that way. That keeps the flag from vibrating back and forth. Obviously, if the wind's coming this way, it's going to vibrate that flag, and if you got it set real light sometimes, it'll work itself loose, and you'll get accidental pops like that. Um, regarding current, uh, same type of thing. What you want to do is just snug the indicator down till you find that tripping point where it almost wants to go off on its own, under its own weight with the bait. What I like to do is hold the trigger, and I'll, I'll back the sensitivity, the orange sensitivity not off until it almost wants to go off under its own weight. And when it starts to move, I'll snug it back just a little bit to make sure it holds. Then you know you're right at that tripping point. So when a fish does hit it, it goes off. Now when we're pike fishing especially, we've used up to 9, 10 inch suckers for that and you get a lively one, especially if a pike comes up and starts sniffing on that bait, your pole's going to start bouncing quite a bit like that. Um, from the sucker and it's, it's pretty tough to dial into that tripping point when you're using such large bait. A technique we've used in the past that works really good is clipping the back of the tail off. Um, this lets the sucker move around, even a shiner, move around uh, as naturally as it looks. It actually makes them look injured, but yet they don't have the leverage from their full tail to uh, trip the indicator. Another technique for really dialing the sensitivity in on this um, and we've used it uh, especially for real light bite type of crappies um, where you can't seem to get the indicator set just as light as you want is to actually bend the wire in or out just a little bit um, to help it either stay on that little kicker ledge or help it come off that kicker ledge and we'll bring you in real close here and show you what I mean so what I mean by that is when you bring the flag wire down, and, and I got the sensitivity control set super light right now, so the trigger is just basically moving freely. The wire comes down and you set it. The wire is bent out just a little bit in this direction, and you can see that it's pulling it out. A lot of times if it's bent out like that, the wind can, the vibration from the wind can lead to false trips, just like that. What you may have to do, and you don't want to bend it hard because you don't want to kink the wire down here, but give it a little bit of a bend backwards, and it'll actually hold itself underneath that ledge a little better. Now, if, if you're doing the light bite crappies or perch, you may want it set super light so you can bend it outward a little bit and put it down under there. And then you have it just hanging on that ledge, just barely. When the fish hits it, It'll pop real freely. Just uh, another technique to use uh, comes into play if you're fighting the wind in wind trips or if you're fighting real light bite fish. Give it a shot. So give those techniques a try and uh, that'll help you uh, dial your indicator in for real sensitive bite.